What's up ladies and gentlemen, today is yet another day of shutting down or burying the fried liver attack completely. You guys responded well to my last video on the lonely attack which I still believe is better than the fried liver attack and that is why I thought of coming up with another video where I show you some other interesting gambits that you can try out in order to replace the fried liver attack. So for those of you who didn't watch my last video on the lolly attack, it begins with the normal Italian game where you put your light squared bishop on c4 and then black responds with the two knights defense and then you go knight g5 right away pressurizing black's f7 pawn where black responds with d5 then after pawn takes and knight takes you don't take on f7 but rather go pawn to d4. I said if black continues playing the top played moves like knight takes d4 you just go pawn to c3 and we saw that it is here where most black players tend to blunder after playing the top played move knight e6 or knight c6 for example which allows you to win the free knight on d5 immediately. So after making that video I actually discovered that there are quite a number of other beautiful openings that you can use in place of the fried liver attack. So the first opening on our list is the scorch gambit Sarat variation where you begin with e4 that black responds with e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4 and then black plays the top played move bishop c5. Up to this time everything looks normal and of course black is expecting us to go Point to c3, point to d3 or probably just to castle shot all of which we are not even thinking about. The move ladies and gentlemen is point to d4 right away. Now this opening will involve at least three amazing gambits before reaching the main variation of our interest the Sarat variation. As you can see in the Leeches database the top played move is e takes d4 followed by bishop takes d4 and knight takes d4. We are going to look at all of this before we move on to the next interesting opening. For example e takes d4 is what you're going to see most of your opponents playing. Well here the theoretical move is pawn to c3 which is okay but I kinda hate this move because I feel it's just too predictable. For example we expect black to take on c3 so that we can sacrifice our bishop on f7 with check and after king takes f7 we go queen d5 check then on the next move grab black's dark squared bishop which is okay but the problem with this is that most black players seem to know this line so after pawn to c3 they may even play something else like knight to f which is why I want to recommend a new move to you guys knight g5. This puts the immediate pressure on the f7 square. For example if pawn to d5 by black you can simply take with your light squared bishop so black just lost a free pawn which is why we can't even worry about this. Another wasted move is knight e5 which some unprepared opponents play at times. Well this is bad because we can simply sacrifice our knight on f7 like we always do in the fried liver attack. If knight takes f7 well we can as well sacrifice our bishop on f7 with check and after king takes making black lose his right to castle that's when we go queen h5 check and let's say after pawn to g6 we just go ahead and take the bishop or first of all give black a check maybe to force him go back and then grab the bishop. If you want you can also play queen e5 check and maybe win the rook on h8 but anyways just take the bishop because you are threatening to win a free pawn on the next move so this is also fine. Anyways so having looked at black's candidate moves after knight g5 we can now look at the top played move knight to h6 which almost everyone plays after you play knight g5. Well once again this doesn't change anything you can just go ahead and sacrifice your knight on f7 again double attacking the queen and the rook. So if knight takes you simply go bishop takes once again with check and after king takes you have queen h5 check which also comes with the same threat of winning the dark squared bishop on c5 if g6 again you don't have to take immediately if you want you can go queen d5 check and then take the bishop off I mean anything is playable queen takes c5 is also a move if pawn to d6 you just go queen b5 preventing black from moving his light squared bishop if a6 you just put your queen on d3 
and continue playing as highlighted on the board. Anyways, back to our Scotch Gambit Sarat variation, which arises from the Italian game where Black plays Bishop c5 on move 3, and then instead of castling short or playing pawn to d3 or c3, we immediately play pawn to d4. We just finished looking at the e takes d4 line on move 4, but what if Black plays knight takes d4? Well, this is equally bad. First of all, the main move to consider is bishop d3, but knight takes e5 is still not much of a stretch because most of your opponents again won't know the correct continuation. For example, you can see the top played move is knight e6 played by over 20,000 people on leeches, which is a blunder because we can safely take that knight and if d takes e6 for example, this is even worse because we can simply exchange queens and then win the free rook on h8 on the next move. This is bad for black and we don't even mind even if we lose that knight on h8 will just keep on developing normally as shown on the board. This is check by the way, bishop g5 check. If king e8, we can go pawn to c3 you know, preventing black from winning our rook. So this is an attack on the bishop. If bishop e5, we have pawn to f4 or even knight a3, anything is playable. As long as we are developing our pieces on the most active squares, they can go for our knight, but we can go for their king if we want or just letting our knight die with dignity by capturing a free pawn on g6 and then go pawn to f4. In this position, we are just up by two pawns with a completely winning position. Again, after bishop c5 and pawn to d4 immediately, the knight takes d4. Well, you don't always have to take on e5. I mean, in the view of winning the rook on h8, instead of taking the free pawn on e5, you can just go bishop e3 immediately because black's bishop on c5 is undefended. I mean, if they play the top played move, knight takes f3, check. Well, again, that is a blunder because the bishop will just be free after queen takes f3. I don't even know why most people take on e3 here. You can see on the leech's database because that hangs mate in one like this. Anyways, black doesn't have to take on f3 after we play bishop e3. Maybe they should play the second most played move knight to f6. But again, this turns out to be a blunder because of knight takes e5 this time. And we are threatening to take on f7 and the free knight on d4. For example, if they castle short, which is the top played move, well, that hangs the knight on d4. And so we should take it with our bishop. And after bishop takes, we just take back with our queen. In this position, we are just simply a piece up. Ladies and gentlemen, these are very effective traps. And as an e4 player, you must know these traps. You have no option if you want to improve. Anyways, one may say black didn't have to castle short. I mean, after taking on e5, for example, instead of castling short, black just needed to retreat his knight back to e6. But well, this is again a blunder because of bishop takes c5 first. That bishop was free. I told you if knight takes c5, you simply have knight takes f7 double attacking the queen and the rook on h8. If queen e7, which is the top played move, well, you can just go ahead and take that free rook. Don't worry about your knight. You are up an exchange. If queen takes e4 check, just go for simplification, exchange queens. And at worst, this knight should die with dignity on g6 after taking a pawn or messing up black's pawns on the king side. Anyways, once again, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, and bishop c5. Remember, we play pawn to d4 immediately on move 4. And so far, we have already looked at what happens if e takes d4 and knight takes d4. So now it is time to cover the correct move according to Stockfish Bishop takes d4, which is the top played move in the master's database, by the way. And this is why I love this gambit so much together with the max lynch attack and the deuce gambit, because the only correct move for black is Bishop takes d4, which they don't want to do in the opening. You know, strong players like keeping their bishop pair, but this line forces them to give up their bishop pair very early in the opening stage. So after bishop takes d4, you simply take back. And after e takes d4, you can just go ahead and castle short. Again, if pawn to d6, what else can you do here? You can't go queen h5, it doesn't make sense. Maybe pawn to f5. But hey, in most of these Italian lines, when you have nothing to do and your opponent's pawn is on d4, pawn to c3 is how you start your attack. Because if they take once again, 
You can simply take back with tempo, that's if you want, or even turn this into some kind of a Danish opening with queen b3. I mean, if they take on b2, they'll just help you activate your dark squared bishop on a more active square. So they play queen e7, you can see that's the top played move, defending their f7 pawn. And this is when you can take on c3 with your knight. If knight f6, the top played move, again, you just pin that knight with bishop g5. Next, you want to play knight d5. What's so difficult about this, you guys? Let me know how you feel so far in the comment section down below. So this is just to show you how you can play after bishop takes d4. Now it is time to move on to the next opening that has the potential to replace the fried liver attack. Our next opening is the two knights defense perux variation where you begin with e4 then black plays e5, knight to f3, knight c6. Then this time instead of going bishop c4 right away, you go pawn to d4. Guys, there are so many ways to kill a rat. This is what makes chess to be so interesting. Anyways, if e takes d4 the top played move by black, you can just go bishop c4 and of course they are going to play knight to f6 the top played move. By the way, this is the top played move in both the leeches and the masters database. So this is why you can go pawn to e5 if you want or again go knight g5 immediately. I love this with all my eyeballs you guys. The idea is that after pawn to d5 by black the top played move, you just take that pawn. If knight takes d5, again the top played move, you don't make this mistake of sacrificing your knight on f7 because your king is still exposed. Just like I said in my last video on the lolly attack, for example, knight takes f7, runs into queen e7 check first, and maybe black may win your knight with the queen. So don't just rush to sacrifice on f7 if your king is exposed. What you want to do first is to castle short putting your king to safety and this is the position that we saw in the lolly attack as well where black plays bishop e7 or bishop e6 even in the master's database which are all blunders by the way for example if bishop e7 this is when you can sacrifice your knight on f7 if king takes f7 you go queen f3 check in my last video we saw what happened if the king goes to e6 in an effort to run away from check but what if black plays the top played move bishop f6 blocking the check to avoid blocking with fingers well you just go ahead and take that free knight with your bishop and that comes with check if bishop e6 covering the check or you just take that bishop as well to simplify the game and if you want you can go queen b3 check and win the free pawn on b7 but why not being creative with other moves like knight d2 in this position or rook e1 check i don't know anything is playable anyways the next one which i recommend for rapid blitz and bullet is an opening that arises from the center game where black obviously takes on d4 and then you don't take back but rather go knight f3 immediately inviting knight c6. So by playing this way, you dragged black into your scotch gambit game without him realizing. So instead of going bishop c4 right away, I recommend this weird looking move, knight g5. And you can see the top played move is pawn to h6, which is kind of a mistake because now you have knight x f7 right away, the fried liver attack move. If king takes f7, this is when you go bishop c4 check and black has to find the only correct move king g6 which is very difficult to see if your opponent is not using stockfish or if he is not an advanced player. For example, they all play king e8 which can lead to mate in 6 by the way after queen h5 check and then king e7. There's a mate in 4 in this position which I would love you guys to find and leave your answers in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think about this. In my last video, no one managed to find the puzzle that I gave. Hopefully this one, people will be able to get it right. Let's see what you think about this position. Find mate in 4 and leave your comments. What if black doesn't play king e8 this time and let's say they go king e7 well you can just go pawn to c3 if d takes c3 you can simply take back with your knight they all go knight to f6 which is kind of a mistake because of knight d5 check and again if knight takes d5 the top played move you take back with your queen trying to give a check on f7 so that's why they go queen e8 to prevent that but you have a very dangerous move even in this position 
bishop g5 check sacrificing your bishop so that if they take you take back with your queen and after king d6 you simply cast along with tempo and the only move for black in this position is to donate his knight after which you just take it and after king c6 you have queen b5 checkmate anyways after h6 knight takes f7 king takes and bishop c4 check what if black plays the correct move king g6 which i doubt if many of your opponents are going to see well to continue with dignity you can go pawn to f4 right away you just simply want to castle short and then activate your pieces i mean if bishop c5 the top played move you just go pawn to e5 if pawn to d5 you go bishop d3 check if g6 you just continue marching forward i mean we are only remaining with one game in the database if knight takes e5 you can simply take on f6 with your pawn if knight takes g6 which is a blunder there is simply mate in one with rook f7 checkmate ladies and gentlemen let me know if you like these two be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if at all you haven't already that's how you encourage me to keep on working harder and hope you enjoyed this video as well remember to check out my courses at www.casperchess.com and also follow me on patreon for more extra videos that i can't post on youtube due to people's low attention span and hey have a wonderful weekend see you in my next video bye bye